Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to our second session of uh, Bulletproofing Your Business. Um, I trust everybody's safe and well. Um, cabin fever hasn't yet set in. If they have, then consider this a little bit of a break for, uh, for about uh, 45 minutes or so. Um, guys, we're going to chat about cloud hosting today. Um, I just want to pause and step one second back to the previous webinar. Thank you so much for everybody that attended. We had exceptionally good responses afterwards. People are enjoying it. So this just gives us a lot of energy to obviously continue with the series, but even maybe uh, elaborate on, on more stuff in the future. So today, David Lees, Joint CEO, and Stephen Cohen, um, the Business Development and Strategy Director at Eintree, will be taking you through our hosting offering, but also you know, concepts around cloud hosting, um, what, what it could mean for your business, et cetera. All right, guys, David, over to you. Thanks, Jaco. Okay, so uh, I'm hoping most people uh, watched our overview the first uh, in our series of webinars. I'm going to do a little bit of repetition on the introduction and we'll probably do it on everyone in the series. So sorry for that. Um, unfortunately, this is uh, not Netflix that you can just press skip intro. Um, so just to start off with this slide before we get into the hosting, really what we, what we try to demonstrate in the series of webinars is the components or the elements that we think uh, modern businesses should have in order to be uh, bulletproof. Uh, and when we mean bulletproof, what we mean by bulletproof is to be able to, to carry on working through any kind of disruptive process. Uh, obviously, we do have one right now with the COVID um, lockdown period, but even without that, there's, there's um, other disruptions which you need to um, mitigate against in your business. So we'll get back to the slide at the end. I'm just going to move on to the next slide. And what we're really dealing with in business is uh, this, these kind of factors which lead to disruptions in our business. And uh, th this presentation was really designed before the coronavirus became an issue or it was even known. And that's why we don't really list it on here. But these are the factors which we thought were quite important and, and when Stephen goes through our hosted environments uh, structure, you'll see that we kind of um, deal with all of these and make sure that they, they don't disrupt your business. So I'm not going to really read the slide. I'm just going to go to the next slide and I'm going to hand over to Stephen to carry on. Okay, Dave. Yes, go for it, Steve. Okay, hi everyone. I um, hope you're all okay and obviously without the anxiety about business, getting the time to really consider things and that, that like you wanted to always spend time on in your life. And for me personally, uh, this stuff has been important. Um, so I think I can talk to you with more knowledge than I could previously. Essentially, we're talking about two scenarios. The top scenario is the traditional one, let's call it. And uh, in my 30 years of business, we always kind of, up till about three years ago, we always worked in option one, which was you have all your coworkers in your office, each one has a, either a desktop or a laptop. And the servers, which you all connect to for mainly your financial applications or any of your documents that you share is, on, is in your same office. It may be in a separate server room, which is cooled, or it may actually be next to your desk and everybody connects to it. And even sometimes the server kind of was formed a dual role of, of being your computer and the server. So users connected to those, that physical server on the right um, through the local area network. That's why you saw all the cables in your office. Um, and the physical server could just have your database stored on it, or the applications are then installed on each endpoint. So if I talk back to my previous job, you would have Pastel's database sitting on the server on the right, and everybody would also have Pastel loaded on each workstation on the left, but they would connect to the data, all the customer lists, the financials, all the records, the stock items would all be sitting on a database on the right. And that's the way you did it. Then email came in. Sorry, Dave, can you just go up? 
Then email came in, and for the first time, the only exposure to the outside world was really through your email. And then you started using browsers, and you, in those days, you were looking at marketing pages and getting information. Once the internet became transactional and you could actually work on it and only look and not only look at stuff, then we got to scenario two, where the users connected to the physical server, uh, this one here. Sorry, Dave, you can go to the next one. So then you have a virtual private server because now you've taken that server on the previous screen on the right, you now put it outside the physical location of your office. And that's the big thing. So it's almost like you took that server you saw on the previous slide, which is in the corner of your office, and you now moved it outside the physical boundaries of your business. And we call that a virtual private server. Now, the reason why it's called virtual is because on Entree's infrastructure, um, which is hosted within the Vodacom data center with its 24-hour security and backup power for six months. We create servers for each client. And then you connect to that server to get to your applications. So you will have on the left, you will still have your same PCs and whether they desktops or laptops. But you can see that the servers are now missing. They're now on the right within Entree's data center. A lot of people say, but why do we still need the computers in our office? Well, actually, to tell you the truth, the only function they're really performing is that they screens. You're sharing your screens, really. You're sharing the screens from the servers on the right down to your computers on the left. So the big thing here is that there's no processing power needed on your machines on the left. The only reason why people still do it today is they're often running their office applications on their laptops and their desktops in the office. Um, but I can honestly see that in a few years time, you're really gonna have everything hosted in the cloud, which means that the power of your laptops and your desktops in the office can be vastly reduced. And the thing you can look forward to there is less upgrade cycles in terms of you know upgrading because you need more RAM or harder space. Because remember, all that stuff is sitting on the data center with Entry. And uh, all your applications will be hosted. Uh, so that's what you can look forward to. Now, obviously, you can see how much cleaner this bottom picture is because it's one point on the left to one point on the right, which means if there are software upgrades and all that kind of stuff, it's upgraded once on the server. So to take a good example, pretend you're all using Pestle and you've got 10 users in the office. And pretend you're using Pestle 12, 13, whatever they are now. And pretend it goes up to version 40. Now you've got to upgrade 14 machines on the left where they're a picture of three. Pretend they're 14 there. So you've got to upgrade all your software in this new environment where you host it. The software upgrade's done once on the server on the right. So you're taking all that mess and chaos out of your office on the left and really dumping it on the right in one point of truth, one version of the truth. So there's very little maintenance, very little confusion in the office. Steve, Next can slide, I just interject yeah. there for a second? Sure. I just wanted to make it clear when Stephen says your servers are in our data center and why it's called a virtual server is we, some people seem to have the um, idea that we've got like a big room at the Vodacom data center with, with like tons of little servers, little physical servers sitting there, which is not the case. And Stephen, I think we'll talk about that a bit later when he talks well, about it. Well, Dave, it. it's a great point. I don't want you to think that we came and picked up that old server of yours that was in your office and actually just moved it into a new room. It's not that at all. You actually don't need that server anymore. We create virtual servers for you in the cloud. So whatever you decide to do with that server in your office, you know, that's up to you. But good point, Dave. Yeah, so virtual, what, what, what we have is this hugely powerful computes, computing power in the data center, which Stephen will talk about a bit later, which one machine has got the capacity to create multiple virtual servers. So each one is a, is a virtual server on our hardware. But I think Steve, you'll cover that a bit later. Okay. 
All right, so let's go through the reasons for hosting existing applications in the cloud is the ability to work from anywhere whenever you want to. But it eliminates the need for a physical server in your office, which I've already said. It makes upgrading servers resources easy, which I already said. These are additional things. Ensures physical security of your servers. So if somebody came to your office and stole everything, you actually, in terms of this particular discussion, you wouldn't lose a thing. All your programs would still be on our servers. All your data would still be on our servers. If you had a flood or an earthquake or something like that, or your office burnt down, same story. You just go out to Incredible Connection or wherever, get a new laptop, connect to our hosted environment, and you carry on going. Absolutely as easy as that. Offers a better opportunity to manage cybersecurity. This is also important because you've got all your stuff sitting on one server in Aunty's infrastructure, it's much easier to protect. You know, it's like when you go on holiday with your kids, you know, when your kids are all running in different directions, you're freaking out and are they safe and will you see them again? It's like having all your kids in one space and you can see them all the time and no one's going to get lost and everything's safe. Enables business continuity with our built-in security and DR servers. Now, what that means is we will do all your backups for you. And DR goes a bit further than that, um, which I don't want to really talk about here. But it, it obviously, in a disaster environment, we just spin up a new server and you carry on working. But that's a bit of a complication that I want to discuss at this point. If you guys want to talk about it another time, we can. So that's from like the security point of view, et cetera, et cetera. If we talk now about reasons for hosting existing applications in the cloud, your recovery time objective and your recovery point objective, what does that really mean? Recovery time objective refers to how current is your data? And your recovery point objective refers to, sorry, your recovery time objective refers to how quickly can you get up and running again? And the recovery point objective is how far back. Now this really talks to that draws thing that I didn't really want to go into. So if, if the server um, bombs out, we can restore that server immediately and you get going. So simplifies the complex, improves management of power failures and load shedding, enables access from multiple locations, improves your staff status quo, small learning curve, streamline your auditing and accounting support. Again, I remember in my days of auditing, you know, you would say, where's the latest data sitting? Give me a backup. I want to look at it. You'll just let your accountant or your auditor log into the financial system on the server from wherever they are, and they can do their audit. And really, they, they'll come into your office only to tick physical pieces of paper and look at contracts and stuff like that. But even then, if you had everything scanned and on the same hosted server that Aunty will provision for you, that's not even an issue. So... This really bypasses all the physical limitations of, of the world that we live in. Steve, I want to just pick up that point about access from multiple locations, which uh, even in the normal kind of course of business, I know at the moment we, we sort of in a, a new paradigm where everyone's working from home. But typically, if everyone's working in the office, it's quite cool if you're able to, if you're the bookkeeper, the accountant, you're able to go home or... or you know, you just want to, you're at home and you need to check the accounts. Um, you just log on. It's not as if you have to bring your laptop home, which has got the database on, and then, you know, no one else in the, in the office can work on it, or you're having to, to, to download a copy of the database before you go home and upload it to your local machine. This, you just log on and you just see the live data wherever you are. I mean, Dave, it's an interesting point you make because even for me, you know, in our office, I, I, I use an iMac. And I used to think I've got to have a laptop, but you know, I actually don't even need a laptop because I've got an iMac at home and an iMac at the office. And I just right. log in from my iMac at home and I carry on working like I was in the office. It's actually, you don't even know where you are. Okay. Um, just to go through the main points there. Simplicity, I hope that you all understand why it's, I mean, in fact, we, if you say, well, Stephen, what is more complex from this? Like there's got to be some give and take. There is nothing, seriously. The only thing that you need for this is an internet connection. And you will see that Yaku, who set up this presentation, has got a poll and he actually asked you what type of your internet connection you've got. So that's honestly the only 
uh, you know, limiting factor, if we can call it. Another very cool thing is that your RT budget is so identifiable. There is a fixed charge per month, and that is the end of the story. Now, you know, I often ask people in a business, well, how much are you paying for RT? The conversation normally starts off with five minutes. And then after I ask a few more questions, it takes longer because for you to consider everything that you're paying for RT is quite a difficult exercise because everybody is always upgrading stuff. You have RT technicians that run around that then fix things. Your data gets corrupted and you've got to fix that. So when you really think it through, it's a lot more than a lot of people are normally immediately aware of. Let me put it that way. Um, there, there was a, a, Dave, I think you've moved on the slide, but there, there was another, the, the previous slide spoke about data corruption. No more power issues, data corruption kept to a minimum. This is an interesting one to talk to as well. Because... Can I move on, Steve? No. I just want to talk about this because I do know that in the accounting world, this okay. is a mess. I think we've lost Stephen. So we're going to move on to the next slide. Can you hear me? He's there, David. Stephen yes. is, is there. Uh, okay. I'm um, here. Yeah. So I just want to quickly talk a bit more about that data corruption. Um, I spoke in the last session about power fluctuations. And if you've got your server in your office, very often that fluctuating power, because remember, I mean, at the end of the day, you talk about data, which is transferred through electricity or cable. So if you have a power fluctuation, your data gets corrupted. And that gives people feeling of, of being very like chaotic. Is the data right? Isn't it right? Now somebody's got to fix the data. Because our power is so clean in the Vodacom data center, you don't have any power fluctuations. It also means that if you have a laptop which has battery power, if you're connecting through your 3, your 4G or your LTE modem, your power in your office or at your house could go down completely. You will still be able to work for as long as your computer is powered and your internet connections on. So now, if you're using your 4G modem on your, la on your iPhone and you're connecting through that or your Android device, this thing carries on running as normal. Because remember, the moment you have a power failure, you need to get your mindset right. Pretend you're working on Pestle and the power goes off. Pestle's actually still running. It's running on our server. All that's happened is that you can't see the screen anymore because you've lost power on your computer. And that just talks more to the point of there being no data corruption. Your Pestle's running 24 hours a day, no matter what happens to ESCO. Because Vodacom does have diesel for six months to run their thousands of clients that, that, that are in that data center. Okay, Dave, we can go to the next one. Dave, next slide. What does... Next Have slide. We... Okay, cool. Okay, so what does Iron Tree's virtual private server environment consist of? So a virtual private server with private and dedicated network, okay? You will be in your own space in our cluster, if I can call it that. All you will do is say, you'll call us and say, okay, this is the kind of power that we need on our server. How much memory do we want? How much CPU power do we want? And how much disk space do we want? Now, what's great here is that you're not making a final decision. Pretend you've got five employees and you give us a certain specification, and then in a year's time, you've got 30 employees. You'll just phone us and say, hey, can we just increase the RAM, CPU, or storage, or maybe just one of them? Now, remember what that meant in the old days. That meant somebody saying, I need to spend 100, another 100,000 Rand getting more hard drive space or upgrading the server. Doesn't work like that anymore. This is just a simple setting that we have on your, um, on your server in our hosted environment. And it takes us a couple of minutes and we change that. We use Microsoft Server 2016 standard or Microsoft SQL Essential standard 2017. We protect all the stuff from an antivirus, anti-ransomware perspective with Panda Adaptive Defense 360. And remember, again, okay. it's easy for us because we're just protecting that one server. Um, we ensure that your traffic is, in cure, is, is encrypted and secure, 
And we use TS Plus for our remote concurrent connections, but don't worry about that. That's just what we do to get it to work. We also use TS Print because that, you know, in the old days, and I'm saying up to three years ago, printing was an issue in hosted environments. So we've got one of our biggest clients, in fact, is a retail store, if you can believe it or not. So they're printing to till slip printers. And I mean, you don't get more complicated than that. And this thing, they've been with us for six months now without any issues. Our backups. So we're backing up your server as often as you want to. So at the moment, we're doing it every hour. So if something happened, we, you can easily restore to even an hour ago. Or you could find a file. You could say, guys, you know, I was working on an Excel spreadsheet and I screwed it up completely. Can you find the one from two days ago? Or now? We'll do that for you because it's included in the service. Windows Update Management, we do for you. Why is that important? Because as you know, with ransomware and viruses, everybody's saying your software needs to be patched to the latest version. We'll do that for you. Server Resource Monitoring. We'll phone you if we say, hey, look, it looks like you need more hard disk space or it looks like you know, your, your server isn't strong enough to cater for what you're doing. We also provide Office 365 Pro Plus if you need it. We will migrate all your data to the virtual private server. So if you've got a huge amount of data in, on your server in your office, you know, we, obviously we've got to get that to the, our infrastructure at Vodacom. So what we can do is we will come to your premises, back up all your data, take it for you to the data center so you can get going. And then a dedicated support channel for server hosting, because often, you know, some people may want to do things, ask questions. We've got an infrastructure support team, which is based out in Cape Town, and Aunty support is superb. We're known for that. Next slide, Dave. Okay, just for those technical people on the chat, this is the infrastructure, the hardware that we use at our data center. It's Cisco, it's RBM, it's Hewlett Packard Blades. Um, you can see that we use absolutely best of breed for every component in that infrastructure. Um, we haven't, uh, you know, we, we've honestly, we, we said to our vendors, what is the best stuff that there is? And that's what we've got. And then obviously VMware brings everything together, a bit technical for those of you who aren't interested, you don't have to be. Um, and then we've got a one gigabyte internet connectivity. So, you know, we, you're, you're, you won't have slowness due to our internet connection. And that's why please answer that poll um, on the Zoom where we ask you what kind of internet line do you have? Now you can ask, well, how do you actually connect from your laptop at home, at the office? You connect to a VPN. And the VPN is called the Virtual Private Network. And we set up a VPN per business, and then all your users connect to, all your employees, all your staff, all your coworkers connect to that VPN. And what you need to know is it's extremely secure. The data is encrypted, and you can't get anybody actually having a look at what data is going through the line. And on the left there, you can see we've got the profiles. We know what's going on, whether, you know, any errors on the network. So that our monitoring team does consistently through the day. You can see that your screen that you will see once you go into this hosting environment will look exactly the same as the screen that you're used to seeing every day. A lot of people say to me, but Stephen, what will the user interface be like? Will my Pascal or QuickBooks or your Zero, will it look different? It doesn't look different. It's exactly the same. Absolutely no different. You will have your own desktop. Each person will have their own desktop. It's not like you'll all be sharing one desktop. Each user has their own desktop. So if you've got favorite shortcuts there, you will have your shortcuts for each employee in your business. You can localize this and tailor it to each individual person logging onto the hosted server. It's not like you're all going to be seeing just one screen. Okay, thanks, Steve. So if you're wondering whether you should move to a virtual environment or not, what we find is many people that we talk to are not aware that they can use the existing desktop-based software. What do we mean by desktop-based software? 
some of you watching, I guess most of you will be using something like um, Pastel or IQ Retail or uh, Pastel Evolution or one of these legacy type uh, financial software applications that you're running on your, on your laptop or your desktop or your server in your office. The beauty of this virtual private server hosted offering is that we move that entire environment as it is into our cloud, into, onto our virtual server, and it's as if nothing happened. So you don't need to retrain your staff at all. It's, it's, it just becomes simpler that they've got an internet connection and the screens that Stephen just uh, showed you, they just log on and they just work exactly like they had before. Would it be more expensive? Our personal view is it's gonna be cheaper and Stephen's covered some of the costs that you'll save. Um, insurance on, your, on the hardware in your office, uh, a lot of support on, on that hardware in your office. And as well as that, we're finding that uh, some of our customers have moved to our environment because their servers have become uh, end of life and they've had to look at buying new servers, which is a hugely expensive exercise with the, both the hardware as well as the software licensing. Okay. Uh, will the bandwidth affect your connection? Well, uh, as Stephen said, they will, will be putting up a poll at the end of this webinar, and uh, you do need to have a, a, a good internet connection. And I think the reason we think this has become very popular and why we're seeing such an uptake is most people have got fiber or LTE or some kind of reliable connection which has got sufficient bandwidth. Um, Dave, yeah. I just wanted to say one thing about it. Um, and that is a lot of people say, well, obviously if I've got 10 people in my office, there's a huge amount of data that goes through the network. The data that's actually traveling over your internet connection is so small because all you're doing, you need to get this right in your head. You're just sharing the screen. So you, you're not downloading huge amounts of data through your internet connection. It's just like really sharing a screen. So it's far less than what most people think. And in fact, it's normally not consequential. In fact, Steve, it's, it's quite interesting because for those of us like you and I have been around for quite a long time. And even, I mean, when I started my IT career, personal computers were just becoming popular and a lot of companies still used uh, mainframes, uh, which were those massive IBM machines in server rooms with false floors and humidity control and stuff like that. And then people used to have terminals and, and the thing is, the processing power was all done on the mainframe. And we've kind of come full circle. So sure. what Stephen's saying is, when you've got a virtual private server, when he says you're just looking at a screen, all the processing power is actually being done on the server in our data center. And that's why we can monitor what power you, your company's using and uh, load balance and say, okay, well, you know, um, Fred's... Um, um, restaurant or whatever seems to have a lot of activity, we need to increase the processing power so that the user experience becomes better. And it's totally independent of the machines you've got in your office. And Stephen likes to, I'm sorry, I'm stealing your, your words here, Steve, but Stephen likes to take the example of if you did happen to lose a machine in your office, a laptop or a desktop, whatever it is, you could go to Incredible Connection, buy a brand new virgin machine and just log on to the server, the, the Iron Tree VPN server, and it'll be like nothing actually happened. Yeah, well, Dave, at least you're listening to me. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I also want to talk about the second point, and Stephen's mentioned the words virtual private server or virtual private cloud, and that we think is something really powerful, that we, we give you a dedicated connection to our server, so it's not Although it is on the internet and it's exposed through a browser, it's a private cloud. It's not really a, cloud, a, a server that anyone and his dog can, can access just by hacking into it. We've got a lot of layers of security and it's not a server that people would even want to hack into because it's just so much easier to hack into you know, someone's machine in their office which is not properly secured. And David also has a lot to do with the VPN connection because there are other people who connect to service through less secure ways. Yeah. Uh, VPN actually encrypts the data as it travels through the internet, with, which is a further security besides what you're talking about, which is actually the security of our environment on our infrastructure. 
The point to point from our infrastructure to your office goes through an encrypted VPN line. Cool. Okay, so I'm not sure if we need to talk much about this slide. I think we've discussed a lot of a lot of the stuff. Uh, I mean, it's a good slide to show different people in your organization when you want to make a decision about, um, you know, whether you go host it. Because to me, they're just advantages all over the show. And it's nice to have them tabled. Cool. So we're going to send out a recording of this webinar. So you will see the slide, but I think we've actually covered all of these points. Okay, so really, I'm just going to finish off and uh, just to sum up, I think, um, once again, as I said in, in, in the intro, uh, these are the different elements that we that we're going to cover in our series of seminars. Um, I think quite quite interesting to me as well is I wanted to just point out and, and I think you know, we've, we've been using these elements in IronTree for quite a while now. Every one of the elements you see in that cloud, we actually use. Um, and even uh, things like what, uh, what the software we're using here, the Zoom uh, video conferencing application. And I think, Steve, it's quite interesting that if you think about it, uh, people watching wouldn't really even know, but I'm sitting in Cape Town, Stevens in Johannesburg, and Yako's in Somerset West. But the way technology is today, it's so seamless that it doesn't really matter. Um, I think also the, um, this whole lockdown coronavirus period is kind of another um, uh, life-changing event in, in the history of, of our lifetime. And we've had a few, and I suppose our, our grandparents had some other issues or life-changing events like Industrial Revolution and the Great Depression and the World Wars. We've had maybe 9-11, and I think this is, this is another one. And often when you have these kind of events, when things go back to normal, it's actually a new normal. And um, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure how many of you watch the news, but if you talk about Microsoft uh, released some stats this week, that their hosting platforms showed a 775% increase since the coronavirus. Um, uh, another stat which I read yesterday, which is quite funny actually, and uh, so many people are using video conferencing and sitting at a desk just pretty much like I am and Steven is, although Steve, I see just a, a static image of you, not a video, but uh, it's like you're watching the um, TV anchors. Um, what's happened is in the States, uh, a lot of the retailers are selling far more tops, uh, shirts and ties and jackets than bottoms because you don't really know <laughs> not where it's brilliant. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so uh, that's really all I wanted to do say uh, about today's webinar. Um, Yako has put the poll on screen and please, uh, I mean, I see it, so I'm sure you're all seeing it. So please fill in the poll and uh, Yako will be sending out an email with a link to download not only this broadcast, but also if you missed the one before it, you'll be able to access that. Dave, well. yes. I just want to say something about the poll. I've, I'm just testing it myself and I've filled in a few answers and then I say submit and the first poll is staying on the screen. It's not like going to the next questions. Yaka, do you want uh, to unmute? Well, yeah, I can see people are submitting everything, Steve. So, um, Unfortunately, I'm going to put it down to user error on your side. But um, I mean, what can you do, Yaku? <laughs> I, I'm this not is, sure. This is going into my scratch pad about you. I've said <laughs> I like it. Mass <laughs> communication, and then I say submit, and it just stays there. Yeah, it's, it's actually working for everybody else, Steve. Uh, we've, had, we've had more than 40% of people actually responding and filling out the But poll. answering all the questions or just the first three? Answering all the questions. So, uh, yeah, um, the users in our lovely audience is actually giving you some advice. Just screen down to the bottom. Uh, Jim Rankin, oh, okay. yours, is, yours is not working. I apologize for that, guys. Yeah, it, it looks like it's a bit sporadic, but we are getting responses. Um, so, yeah, but you're um, right. You just go down. Yeah. So, um, 
Sorry. Yeah, I encourage you to, to answer those questions. If we don't get uh, everybody polling, um, I, I can put the survey up afterwards again, uh, just to get the answers, but uh, I see there are responses coming in. Um, guys, our next webinar is happening on Friday morning. Um, we will be discussing Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Teams. So that's gonna be an exciting one. Um, the same panelists will join me again and uh, we might have a, a surprise guest panelist also joining us. So um, I'm gonna leave everything up and running for, for the next two to three minutes, just see if we can submit the poll. Um, it looks like it's working now. Jim, I'm very glad it's working for you. Uh, I'm gonna look out specifically for your answers. Um, but guys, enjoy the rest of the day. Um, like I said, I'm just gonna leave everything open for another minute or two, just complete the poll and then, um, and then we'll sign off. All right, thank you very much, everyone. Thank Thanks, you. Guys. Cheers.